Well, g'day. Are you ready for some Moodle mischief today? I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you. Are you ready for some Moodle mischief today? I love Moodle. Do you love Moodle? Good answer, otherwise wrong room. So if you take Moodle and H5P, awesome, right? So there is no excuse for your course to look anything like this. <laughs> Unless you want it to. <laughs> so today, we've just got a whole bunch of random ideas of what you can do with H5P. Um, but I'm not going to say a single thing about each one until this is interactive, right? So if you thought you were going to sit around like that cat, bong bong. So as I show each, well, as my lovely assistant shows each screenshot, you're going to have to tell me which tool or tools were used. No pressure. Which one? I'll give you a hint, it is H5. Is there anybody here? Presentation. <laughs> is this on? Presentation. Presentation. Nada. Uh, that one's not presentation, no. Bunk bunk. It's not interactive book. You get one more shot. Close. Question set. Yeah. All right, so. <laughs> she's, just, she's keeping me on pace, right? The only thing I wanted to say about this one, yeah, yeah. It's all about me, okay, right? Got it? Yeah. Okay. But you told me that this was your... Yeah, to... yeah, I know. You're the boss. <laughs> the only thing I wanted to say about this one was, remember with H5P, you can bling it up with some images. You know, don't always just have to go with the defaults. Now, by all means. With that in mind, what's being used here? Interactive book with... Course presentation. So, have you used Interactive Book much? Yeah? Just fake it. You, you can lie. I'm not going to check you <laughs> yet. Every day, right? Got it. Cool. So, in the Interactive Book, you know, you've got lots of content types, right? And there's a text one, and there's an image one, and stuff, but it puts it one after the other. If you want a bit more control, then course presentation means you can put it together, right? So, you can do whatever you like. Brilliant. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, what is it? Well, this is going to be a very long session. <laughs> it is collage within. Column. Column. Yeah. No, not column. But thanks for playing. It says it up the top. <laughs> Lesson. <laughs> Are we in the blackboard room? I think, yeah. I think we must be. Should we move? Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> it is the collage. So this is H5P collage within a lesson. So I got asked the other day, you know, if you don't use Photoshop and stuff like that, how can you bling up what you're doing? How can you make it look a bit better? Why not use some H5P and embed it into what you're already doing? What's this? Drag and drop. Inside the interactive book, double points, nice. All right, so I've seen a lot of drag and drops. I hope that you're challenging yourself to add some visual elements to it. It doesn't have to be text-based. All right, so get a little bit creative. Now, with creativity in mind, you can also theme what you're doing within Moodle. Okay, you know, we all know Moodle themes, but I'm talking in your Moodle course, in your H5P, Get a little bit creative. Think about, is there some way I could theme what I'm doing? So for instance, something we prepared earlier. So um, anyone, <laughs> go on, I, bonus points if you can guess what I've used here. Because I've given no clues. <laughs> Everyone's going <laughs> Course presentation did I hear way up the back. <laughs> So course presentation where you can take a theme, and they were just using free images, right? Didn't have to cost me anything. And you can take that theme throughout. Now, <laughs> are you playing with me? I'm playing with you. Okay. Are you playing with me? I'm not sure that you're playing with me. 
so, so we've started out the theme and then we take it through to the next slide. Um, so we've continued the theme throughout using which tools? Yep, so we've got Hotspot within Interactive Book. Nice. All right, so you can continue the theme still using a whole bunch of different tools. You can theme in many other different ways as well. So it might just be your choice of language. It might be the choice of the way you name things or the images that you bring along. What tool's this? It's not the interactive book. Branching scenario, winner, winner. Okay, so branching scenario to create a game. Okay, so again, using a series of images to then bring that theme right throughout the game. Now, just a reminder to think a little bit differently when you're doing stuff. Anyone here done Moodle for more than a couple of years? <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Yes, 40 years now. So one of the challenges that we have often is to not just keep doing things the same way, right? So take the moment to think about things a bit differently. So, for instance, what's been used here? I think you're right, I think it was, I only built it, why would I remember? I think it was in an interactive book, but I gave you no clues here, so good job. But simply, yeah, video, but what's underneath it? Accordion. Yeah, all right, so accordion is a really cool little tool. As long as you get a bit creative about it, otherwise it just becomes a lot more text, right? But in this particular case, it was used to provide the transcript for the, for the video. All right, so just a nice simple way of doing that, because I'm a simple girl from Australia. Ooh, what's being used here? It's actually not hotspot, but you could do it with a hotspot. I can actually hear the brains working, can you? They are sleeping. They're asleep? Yeah. <laughs> well, you could sing, that would okay. stop that. And no, you, I no, sing you no. that. <laughs> Damn it, I shouldn't have said that. She said if she sang, I had yeah. to sing. She's not singing. It is an interactive <laughs> book <laughs> moving right along with a course presentation, but in surface mode. All right, so when they click on things, other things popped up. <laughs> I'm taking drugs. What's this one? Hotspot down the bottom. Interactive book with course presentation. Nailing it. Nice. Yeah, keep going. They're getting a bit good. We have to spice it up. If you can't get this one, I'm walking off. It's a hot spot. <laughs> it was a test then. They might want me to walk off. Um, so hot spot is a really cool way of providing more information without it becoming a whole bunch of text, a lot of scrolling. So for instance, um, so this was a medical one, and so it was you know a list of reasons for things. So putting an image with hotspot and have the text appear. Yeah, because I'm simple. Another way of doing what? Hotspot. <laughs> and so this is just creating links off two different websites. So just providing another visual way to, you know, instead of doing a bullet list, because I'm allergic to bullet lists, they suck. Ooh, what's this one? It's not cards, but close. It's in, it's in that realm, it's guess the answer, which was kind of ironic given what I just asked you to do. <laughs> Irony, anyone? All right, so I quite like guess the answer when you want the learner to do something but you don't have to keep them highly accountable. You know, you, you just want to provide a bit of engagement. It's not a bad tool. Stick some images in it. Ta-da. Oh, what's this one? Essay. I love essay. Anyone else use the essay much? And I love, I think, documentation. Documentation. 
Documentation, yeah, I don't use that one. Yeah, sorry. No, this one's essay. Uh, this was essay within column though, so you can have that bonus point from earlier where you said column. Uh, but essay type is really cool. If you haven't used it, do go and have a look. Um, really good where you do want to keep the learner a little bit more accountable. Okay, so you want them to type something in. So all you need is the question. Some sort of model answer. It doesn't have to be a definitive right or wrong. And the sort of wording that you're looking for, it's quite cool. I like it. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> Accordion at the bottom, gone the low hanging fruit, love it. With, I think I heard someone's course presentation in surface mode. All right, so there's no right or wrong. You can use the without surface mode. In this particular case, wanted to just bling it up a little bit and create my own navigation. So just different options. What's this one? It's literally the same thing. <laughs> and still no one yelled it out. <laughs> let's, let's, let's dance. <laughs> you get too bad and we're going to dance and I'm a really bad dancer. So it is course presentation. It is in surface mode once again. Just different ways of providing information. All right, what else have we got? Ooh, I like this part. So really, really, really encourage you to think about putting things together, all right? So, you know, traditionally, we've all got the friend that proudly shows us the Moodle course, they put hours of work into it, right? They love their Moodle course and they show you and your reaction is, it's hideous. What were they thinking? It's just this big list of stuff, all right? You can do better than that, okay? Think about how you can put things together. So, with that in mind, let's put some things together. Okay, if you can't guess by now, what are, what's being used? Interactive book with course presentation using surface mode. Beautiful, with accordion. Nailed it. Oh, look, they're experts now. Yeah. By the end of this, don't need us. Cool, what else have we got? Ooh. And again, interactive book, course presentation. What else is there? Yeah, so just multiple choice question in there. Beautiful. Um, so I've given it away that it is in surface mode. So essentially, the learner can click on something, then it opens up, gives them the audio as well as the text version of what the person would have said. What's being used? Interactive book with drag and drop. Beautiful. Nice. See, they're yeah, getting it now. Yeah, they've got the hang of it now. What's being used? Interactive book with, this is going to test you. It's not choice, but close. Someone said, it's close, so I'll be honest, I had to go look it up. I built it <laughs> and I had to go back in and check what the heck I'd used. I used to be blonde. All right, so it's course <laughs> presentation with single choice set. Okay, so um, yeah, within the interactive book. What could possibly go wrong? All right. Beautiful. Course presentation in interactive book with drag text, yeah, or drag the words. Yeah, beautiful. Nice. Interactive book, hotspot. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're going okay. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see how they go on this one. So it's a lesson. If you didn't get lesson. Order. No, that says order. Ah, yeah, so it's, well, I think its technical name is sort the paragraphs. Yeah, but same thing. 
the only thing I would wish for is that sort the paragraphs was available in a lot more places. You're kind of limited where you can put it. It's kind of a separate thing still. Um, so this one is embedded into a lesson. Okay? But obviously that's not going to work brilliantly if you don't want them to be able to skip ahead. So you've got to think through when you embed. What else we got? What is it? So it's drag the word or drag the text, yeah? With course presentation in interactive book. They're getting it, right? Yeah. yeah. They don't, I, I can get them building my courses for me. <laughs> Actually, it's not a video, but you're close. It is, it's video, yeah, so it's course presentation in an interactive book with audio on top, with a quest, yeah, multiple choice question underneath. You can see how my poor brain works. All right, what else? Okay, what is it? It's a lesson. <laughs> yeah, if you don't at least start with lesson, what, what's the HPIP bit? Image pairing, I think I heard someone say. Yes, I'm just going to say that you did say that because they're going. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so it's image pairing in a lesson. So I cheated a little bit, right? Um, so I wanted them to match up some words. So I just made some images, not highly accessible. Shh, moving on. <laughs> what is it? What does it say at the top? It's a lesson with... It is a form of audio. <laughs> it is one of the speech ones. It's dictation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a bit careful which ones I use because some of them say only in some browsers and I'm allergic to that. Come out in a terrible rash when I have to specify a browser. From here. All right. Yeah. Okay. What else have we got? Okay. What's at the top? It's a lesson. What's embedded in it? Drag, yeah, drag the text. Winning. Ooh, what do we got now? It's actually the dialogue cards, but it's in that realm. Yeah, I can never remember whether it's flash or dialogue. These are dialogue cards. I'm actually a big fan of dialogue cards. They're kind of a way, if you get to a point where you're like, ugh, enough text already, or you keep using accordion or something else, I'm quite a big fan of the dialogue card, just to bling it up a little bit. So we've got dialogue card on, course presentation within, interactive book, with also a question. Beautiful. Like the At the top, lesson embedded with the 360 virtual tour. Yep, beautiful. Um, so basically they just click on each of those things and it can give you more information. So another pretty quick, easy way to create something interactive. Up the top. <laughs> Above the timeline. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, so we've got a lesson embedded in the lesson is timeline. Timeline's actually not a bad little tool. I kind of like it. And remember when you're doing it that you can put some images in there. So I've got background image, but also each of the items you can use an image as well, which is pretty cool. Okay, so at this point, wanted to remind you, if you haven't recently, explore the settings in each of the H5P content types, right? Because often we just shove stuff in, right? With great care. And we just go with the defaults but it is often worth actually having a look at what's in the settings. So let's do that. Oh, look, which content type is it? <laughs> I tell you, if you got that one wrong, I'm leaving. <laughs> it's drag and drop. Okay, so um, drag and drop can be brilliant or really, really hideous and badly done. Okay, so a couple of tips. Um, think about whether you want to use a background image. Sometimes it's not appropriate. Sometimes it just creates noise and mess. Don't do it. Other times it can be really handy rather than it all being text. 
And remember when you're doing the image, you can either put it as the background image or you might decide to put it within the task itself. Okay, so you've got those options. The other thing that people often don't play with is sizing. Okay, so play around with the sizing so that you can maximise how you want it to work and try it on a couple of different screen sizes. Make sure you're a happy camper. Do you know which one this is from? It's still from drag and drop. Good job. In fact, it's from the same one. <laughs> so in drag and drop, a couple of things to check out. Background opacity, whether you want to control that or not to control the look and feel of things. Um, I quite like the enable auto align, but it doesn't always work. Depends what you're building. Right, so you just want to play with that, but it's quite a cool little tool. Do you know which content type we're within? Same thing, nice. I should have brought lollies. <laughs> Next time we'll bring lollies. So one of the things that I do within here quite often is play with the sizing. Don't get too creative, obviously. But um, sometimes, by default, it looks really big and clunky. So sometimes I'll play with bringing that text size down so that you can fit things in a little bit nicer. Um, and also background opacity. You know, do you want the text to stand out or not? It depends what you're building. Ooh, which one are we within? It's still drag and drop. Good job. Hey, um, I'm not a big fan of applying penalties, although I'm a big fan of messing with people, but in this particular case, I don't apply penalties because it tends to confuse the learner. They're like, but I got some of those right. And their maths, their brain just breaks. All right, so think about when you want to use penalties or not. Um, and also the drop zone highlighting. It depends what you're building. It's worth playing with that, whether you want to give away where they're dropping things to. Um, and often I'll enable the full screen so that if they want to, they can make it bigger. Not often will I show the title, but again, it depends what you're building. What else we got? All right, which tool is this one out of? Yeah, good job. <laughs> it says it on the page. Interactive book. Um, there's probably two things that I change here frequently. I'm not a fan of someone just reading. I use interactive books for doing stuff. Okay, so I will change it from read to start. And the other one, which I didn't bother grabbing a screenshot of, is the one down the bottom where it says, your scores have been submitted for review, which I set them all up. The, the facilitator doesn't have to do anything. So I just get rid of the for review so that the learner doesn't think someone else is going to look at it. Now, we have another shining light on the stage this evening. Um, Sarah's going to take us through. Do you, do you want to swap? Do you want to stay there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah. OK. I'm going to share with you a few uh, tips uh, related to the H5P. Uh, it's like she has been showing you a lot of possibilities of H5P. What I'm going to do is to share a few tips. If you have been building H5P activities uh, in Moodle, probably you might know most of them, but it's like just in case. Uh, uh, since uh, Moodle 3.9, you can create your own uh, H5P activities using the content bank. Uh, have you noticed that we have uh, two different views in the content bank? By default, the, the default one is uh, the icons view, but there is another view, the list view. And when, when you switch to the list view, you can see, for instance, the, the places where uh, every content in the content bank is, is uh, linked, and also the author. It's like you can see the size or any, any more information, but that's it. Maybe you, you haven't realized that there are these two different views. And you can also switch uh, uh, quickly. The, uh, it's like if you are in the Barcelona course, you can switch to a different course, to a different content bank in a different course uh, using this selector. That's super easy. So next slide, please. <laughs> I only are you lazy? courses. I don't. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, one typical one thing that people is asking all the time is like, why, when should I embed something or when, when should I uh, create an activity? Which is the difference between both? Uh, it's like uh, when you want to uh, save the score and you want to know the results of the students, uh, you should use the activity. It's the only way that you can uh, save this information in the database. So if you want to see to recover this, this information and to check that. You need to create an h 5 activity and then you will be able to see using the reports all this information. If you just want the student uh, uses your, your h 5 activities for training or you want to make your content, your course content nicer, as Mickey showed you, uh, you can use the embedding option. Uh, using the embedding option is super easy because you have since model 3.8 this nice button, the H5P1, and you can use this button to uh, link any of the contents that you create uh, in the content bank. So it's like you need to go to the content bank first, create these contents, and then wherever you want to, uh, to add this H5P in, an, in a lesson, in a page, wherever you want, you only need to use this H5P button and the content automatically will appear there. Uh, there is one thing that is like, next slide, that when you use, you use this uh, button, uh, you, need, you need to make a, a decision. You, you need to decide if you want to link to the content or if you want to create a copy. Uh, David, I'm not sure if you are here, but this is the slide that you want to, this is the number of the issue that you need to take, uh, to annotate. Uh, it's like, uh, what's the difference between making a copy on, or linking? Uh, if you are using a single Moodle uh, site, uh, the recommendation is to use the link because uh, when you use the link, uh, when you access to the content bank and edit your content, it's automatically uh, automated, automatically updated in, in the, all the places that this content is used. You, you, you edit only the content in the content bank and done. Everything and all the places where this content is used will be automatically updated. Uh, but it's if you are using more than more, more Moodle sites, for instance, you have your regular Moodle site, and then at the end of the year, you make a copy and you save all your courses in a different Moodle site. Uh, this uh, linking option is not going to work for you or, or is going to yeah, give you some issues uh, that will be fixed in the issue that you have here. So uh, if that's something that you are facing, we recommend you to vote this because yeah, that way we will know that a lot of people is interested on fixing this issue. So yeah, vote, comment, or even better, patches are always welcome. So if you have the people that are interested in fixing this, uh, go for it. Yeah, we'll be more than happy to help you to review it or yeah, whatever. So yeah, next. Uh, since Moodle 4.0, we have also a new uh, tiny thing, but it's something that it's, uh, it will help uh, teachers to edit, to find the content in the content bag, because uh, when you have uh, an activity or you have added an H5P content in a lesson, uh, you, and you want to edit it, you have to go to the content bank and edit it. And sometimes it's not easy to find these contents because you have a lot of, a lot of contents in the content bank. Uh, since Moodle 4.0, you have this link the edit h5p content if you have the right permission for editing the content so you don't need to go to the content bank and it's super easy to find and to edit any content that you have uh, in your Moodle courses one tip uh, by default uh, if you have a course with more than one teachers and uh, you want to all the teachers be able to edit all the h5p contents our recommendation is that you change uh, the permission for the manage any content from the content bank uh, capability and you add the teacher to this uh, capability because that way anybody will be able to edit all the activities created in a course. Otherwise, only the author, only the person that who created the, the content will be able to edit this content. So that's also something that you can consider, if, if, especially if you have more than one teacher in a course. You were almost there. So. Uh, there is an interesting uh, thread in the forum, in, uh, in the community forums. There is a forum, a, special, a specific forum for the H5P activities. And this uh, thread is one of the most popular ones uh, to decide if we should use the H5P plugin or the H5P uh, core uh, activity. Uh, I'm going to share with you a few of the um, differences between both and also a couple of problems that we have identified. 
It's like the decision, as Andre explained us yesterday during the keynote, is over to you. We are making a lot of decisions, and this is also one of them. Uh, for instance, differences with the uh, H5P that we have in core is that you can embed the content anywhere. So it's, like, it's something that it was not that easy with the H5P plugin. So for me, just this, this is uh, super nice because you can use uh, H5P easily uh, in lessons, in pages, wherever you want not just the H5P activity. So yeah, that's really nice. Uh, the reporting, if, when you are using the H5P activity, is much more better. It's not because we, we, we did it, it's because it's like we, 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 we got the, oh, sorry, thanks. Uh, because we got the, the feedback from the users and that's what they say. Uh, it's also bet, best integrated with the gradebook. I have to say that no, sometimes or some activities are not stored, they, they uh, grades in the grade boot, but that's, that's not, it's happening with the H5P plugin and also with the H5P activity. And it's because some content types doesn't support the, the, don't support the, the grade book thing. So it's depending on the content type, in some cases, this grade book information might not be there. Uh, the content bank uh, is, we think it's a good idea. It's like you have a, a, a place where you, what do you think about that? I like the content bank. Okay, thanks. Yeah. It's like you have a place, a centralized place in a course where you can have all the contents and then you can use these contents in all your courses. So it's like, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, it's from the administrator's point of view. It's easy to manage the H5P content types. It's like you have the list of uh, libraries. You can see which versions you have for, for each uh, library. You can upgrade them. Uh, there is a cron job which uh, uh, is automatically updating the, them uh, every week, every month. Uh, so it's like amazing. And, uh, it's like we have a couple of uh, issues. Uh, the, the other one, not this one. Yeah, just go, go mm, fast, and it's like time, I'm, I'm all. So. Yeah. It is, it, there is a couple of missing features. Let's go for it. Uh, one of them is like the students must complete the whole activity for saving their results. Uh, that's, there is an issue for yeah, implementing that. It's like for now, uh, if you if you don't go, don't, don't arrive to the end of the activity, the results won't be saved with the current version. And the other is like the integration with the H5P hub. Uh, there are these two issues, so yes, please feel free to comment to vote to send patches to us. They are more than welcome. This is a list of other uh, issues related to H5P. The same, feel free to this, uh, order it by, by Sears. That, yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? Just helping speed you up. <laughs> Um, okay, it is time, but uh, wow, we have a lot of questions. Okay, um, up to you. It is time for the coffee break, but if you want to stay and ask questions, um, we'll yeah. welcome that. Okay. Yeah, quick question. Uh, yeah. Great presentation, some wonderful ideas. Uh, tell us, with, with uh, H5P and the content bank, that's course-centric, right? Much like a question bank for quizzes. Can it be opened up so that teachers in other courses have visibility and access to that content bank to make it easy to share it's, the objects? Yeah, they can use, if they have access to the courses, it's like if I, I'm a teacher and I have access to other courses, I will be able to use any content in the content bank, banks of in other courses. So yeah, Understood. yeah, the answer is yes. All right, brilliant, thank you. Well, um, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, hi there, thanks for the great uh, presentations first and foremost. Um, so uh, I would like to address the elephant in the room that currently there has been a statement by Martin Dugiamas that apparently um, the roadmap of HFP and Moodle Core don't really align anymore from a recent MUA town hall gathering and I would like to know if there are any further develop developments on this because um, especially in Germany we are currently having lots of content being created in H5P and um, the baseline problem a lot of projects are facing is that they don't know um, which H5P implementation they have to support, which in turn also leads to, well, which H5P version are they even able to support? And uh, yeah, I think this is the perfect place to try to get some current information on this issue because that's really quite serious for us right now. Uh, 
it's like I, I'm not the person to answer that. It's like I'm just a developer. Uh, but, but what I can say is like we have been uh, doing a lot of effort to integrate H5P in core. So, so I don't think we are going to remove what we have in core. And we love what we have. And we know a lot of people is using it and is happy with that. So I have no idea about uh, the future. But I don't think it's uh, something that we are going to remove uh, easily. So yeah, that's the only thing. I, maybe that's something that you can raise to Martin. Uh, yeah, okay, I will try to do that because I think it would be really helpful to get an official statement on this soonish <laughs> rather than later. Thank you very much. Um, more of a technical question. Um, w we're having issues with, uh, so we've got drug the words, um, uh, you know, drag and drop um, stealth activities in a data room in a course and then we embed it into a book okay so we've got students that are complaining because on some of the devices the words are outside of the they're visible and it's supposed to when it's embedded it's supposed to you know adapt to the screen so the words usually appear i've tried a different setup i've tried changing the size and i it's that it's still an issue are you aware of that issue do you, you have any um, advice on how to fix this? I, I haven't, I, I, I don't know any issue related to that. Maybe, maybe you have a theme that it's, has some CSS that it's interfering, it's not a... No CSS. Like a, I would suggest raising a, an issue tra in the tracker and then okay. we will take a look. It's like, yeah, maybe that's something specific or something that I, we've missed. D that's, do you have any face? This? No, I, I haven't had that problem. So okay, right. All right. I'll, great, thank you. Can we uh, migrate from a SCORM package to Hash5P? Can, can we migrate? Since I see uh, the migrate tools from SCORM package uh, to uh, Hash5P. Uh, yeah, it's like the, in the previous slide. Here, it, I forgot because, yeah, Mickey decided that I didn't, uh, I was talking too much. Uh, there is a migration tool, so it's that, uh, yeah, you, you can. From uh, no, from SCORM. No, not from SCORM. No. At least I I don't know any if there is any tool from to migrate from SCORM to H5P, but yeah, that's something that should be raised to the H5P community. Maybe the, the uh, thank you for your presentation and uh, adding to my colleagues' uh, thoughts about H5P core against uh, mod h5p we've run into issues with sharing content between instances that are running different versions one mod h5p one core h5p and core h5p running a more modern library version like 124 and mod h5p still being on 122 and thus it being only able to share one way is there a plan to keep that more in sync Yeah, I think that it's like the, it depends on the content types. Like it's like I haven't tested that, uh, but it's like uh, sometimes I'm looking there because the, the before yeah, Maya made not the, the answer. Uh, I haven't tried. I'm not sure if uh, yeah. I'm not sure if there are issues between different content types. You said it, it, yeah, you haven't. It's like when you look at the content type activities, there there are kind of um, upgrading processes. Uh, that I don't think it should be it, a big problem. It actually wasn't uh, depending uh, on the content type, but it uh, was the core library that was a different version, uh, and we were able to migrate from activity to uh, from mod h5p to core, but not the other way around. Okay. It's not a question; it's just an answer. There is a hidden parameters. In, yeah, it's in the code. It's not available in the UI, the admin UI. I don't really remember the syntax, but I can send it to you or post it somewhere. And what it does, it when you back up the H5P, it will add extra libraries. But then the backup process will take much longer. And then you can move your H5P from one instance of Moodle to the other one. It's something internal, yeah. We put it in the config PHP file, 
because it's not in the yes, interface. Yes, thank you very much. Now that you mentioned yeah. it, it's something we've you know disabled I mean? because of performance issues for, yes, the, for the course backups. Me too. Yes. I only turn it on when I need to move it from different instances. Yes. Otherwise, turn it off.